God of might. You are the one that bore it all for us. And by you we live and move, and by you we have our being. We're here today, Lord, speak to us. And bless us through the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I must confess that I came to church today, having not been around for some time, I came to church to just come, sit down, and be ministered unto. Praise the Lord. After all, today is Father's Day, and there is time for everything in life. There is time to walk, there is time to rest. Am I right? So I felt today is supposed to be my resting day. Let me hear people preach to me. Amen. But then, thank God I called the pastor and I said, what's the plan for today? And he said, I didn't plan to preach today. I said, ah. I didn't plan to preach. You didn't plan to preach. What happened to the church? Praise God. Amen. He said, uh, maybe we should just put a message. I said, on Father's Day, so I quickly jumped up. And I asked to say, Lord, what do you have to say to your people? Amen. And I'm glad to tell you God has a word for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, the duty of a father just dawned on me that that is what fathers do. Fathers are always prepared. No matter what the situation may be, they don't back up. They don't back down. They don't back out. They don't say, well, I throw in the towel. No. The fathers are always there for the family. I pray that heaven will be there for you in Jesus' name. Today, I will be talking on the ministry of fatherhood. That's exactly the word that was dropped in my heart. And that's what I went to plan and to prepare about. In December 1993, a tragedy struck in my family. Um, my father that we have always known and seen as the backbone of the family the hope of the family the helper, the support the strength of the family suddenly died in a very very tragic way and very painful and so, we're all confused and thrown in this array. And as I went downstairs to prepare this message, just as I was rounding it up, then I remember my father. And I felt this man that was so energetic, so tireless, disciplined, dedicated. My dad was a disciplinarian. If you ever met a disciplinarian, and my dad was one. Nonsense will not just have his way around my father. He was a devoted man, a devoted father, dedicated father. He labored and labored for us. And today, I want to say posthumously, happy Father's Day to my father. I honor him today. Amen. And then I remember that I have a father figure that is still living, who has been so much to me, and who has been used immensely to be a blessing to me. And I want to use this day to equally appreciate him, to this great man, who has been a blessing not just to me, but to his own generation. For his service, for his sacrifices, for his devotion, for his dedication, for his life of offering to the world of his time. I stand here today to appreciate the person of my father in the Lord, Pastor William F. Owen. I thought you were going to stand up as you do that. 
Let's learn to honor and appreciate our fathers. Thank you so much. God bless you. You may have your seat. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, I'll be talking about the ministry of fatherhood. Verses 9 through to 13, we have the words of our Lord and Master, Savior, Jesus Christ, giving his disciples the model of the way and manner they ought to be praying and approaching the Heavenly Father. In verse 9, Matthew 6, 9 says, After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And somebody say forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Here, time will not permit me to get into the exigencies of this prayer model. But one thing is very clear here. It says, our Father which art in heaven, the first thing is, hallowed be thy name, honor be thy name, reverence be thy name, glory be thy name. And as we have our Father in heaven, we have our earthly fathers also. That must be hallowed, that must be honored, that must be reverenced and appreciated. When I look around our world today, I see the world upside down. I see that the role of the father has been taken out. And a lot of fathers have succumbed and submitted to that also. And now they are taking the back seat. If you are a father, I challenge you. You will take your place in your generation in Jesus' name. The father's seat is the driver's seat. The father's seat is the leading seat. The father's seat is the guiding seat. The father does not stay behind. You get up and you get to your place. And whatsoever has decimated you, the power of heaven will destroy them in Jesus' name. He says, thy kingdom come as the head of the family. That nuclear family is your kingdom. And God has made it to be the king over that kingdom. And the king of a kingdom does not sit back for the subjects to be ruling and to be reigning. The king of the kingdom does not relinquish his authority, his position, his power to the queen, the children, or to the chiefs of the land. When the gold post is down, the, gold, the game is over. When the king is dead, then the city is in disarray. No wonder. We're having trouble and problems in many homes and families today. I pray the Lord himself will fix it for us in Jesus' name. Thy kingdom come. How do you want your family to be? How do you want things to be shaped in your family? You understand, in this part of the world, in this nation, the children now are the ones controlling most homes and families. That is not the plan of God. The Bible says, woe unto a city when the children are now your rulers. It's a cause on the land. And if you read your Bible very well, that is not how it's supposed to be. May I submit to you, without fear or favor of anyone, and without care about what anyone may say, that the leadership of the family is not supposed to be handed over to the women. 
they are to be led, to be guided, to be shepherded, to be protected, to be provided for, to be clothed, not the other way around. If you as a man, you are the one sitting back, and your wife is now the breadwinner of the family, something is wrong with you. Whatever you got to do to be there for your family, to be the head of your family, the shepherd of your family, the priest over your family, the provider for your family, I pray God will give you the grace to do them in Jesus' name. I need a better one. Yeah. To be a father requires strength. To be a father requires courage. If you lack the courage of fatherhood, if you lack the strength of fatherhood, you cannot be who God has called and ordained you to be. You will never fulfill destiny. Yes, will there be challenge? Of course, we can tell all over. There are challenges against the men of our time. In the days gone by, the fathers are the heads of the home. In our time and this now, the women are the, and the children are the heads of the home. It is the Bible being turned upside down. Things will change. Especially in the Christendom. The family and the homes of Christians. Things will change in Jesus' name. It says, Thy will be done on earth, on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Why on earth? There is a father figure here on earth. Who looks at the pattern of the father figure in heaven? And he's saying, God is there in heaven, giving instruction and direction to the father here on earth. Who must comply with those instructions in order that the will of the heavenly father be done here on earth. And so, if you have no will for your family, no direction for your family, no instruction for your family, then you are not a leader. You are not a father. You are not a true representative of heaven. He says, give us this day our daily bread. You can see uh, the role of the father as a provider for the family. That no matter what may be happening, no matter what you have to do, not stealing, you must go labor for your family to eat, for your children to eat. You say, I'm a Christian, and then you want to spiritualize it, uh, that uh, two or three times in, in a week we must fast. No, that is not the purpose of fasting. That is starving. Don't starve your children, and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors things happen in the family and let me tell you this fathers many a times are grieving sad sorrowful unhappy one because of what the wives are doing two because of what the children are doing three because of the challenges they are confronted with in life number four because hopes and expectations are not being made. And so, many a times, they go through a lot. They keep a lot of things in their hearts. And before you know it, don't you know, don't you see that men died much earlier than women. Many a times, it's because of all these problems. And I pray that you women, you will not lead to the death of your husbands in Jesus' name. And you children, you will not be the root cause of the early termination of the lives of your fathers in Jesus' name. And so, there will be offenses. Why? The food is not ready on time. Children, uh, the house is not well clean on time. Offenses will come. You expect this. It didn't happen when you expected it. And then you give instruction. It's not followed exactly the way you give it. Offenses will come. And Father, understand you should learn and cultivate the habit and the attitude of forgiveness. Offenses will come. And if you cannot forgive, you'll be closer to your grave than expected. 
If you cannot let go and let God, no matter what happened, no matter what did not happen, get your wife back to yourself. Get your children back to yourself. Understand you are the leader. And there are times in the family that this particular child, or maybe it's the woman, that is doing things in such a way to scatter everything. Understand they are all under your control. It is you, the father, that you go on your knee and say, Oh, Lord God, you put me in charge of this family. It will not scatter over my head. And then you do everything you can. You call the woman together. If that woman is not possessed by the devil, she will listen. What is it? Let us talk together. Let us, even God say, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. No matter the offense, no matter the disagreement, no matter the situation, you settle together as husband and wife amicably. You don't say, well, as a man, if she doesn't come, I will not go. No, you don't do that. It's going to be destroyed over you. But if you do your part and the woman fails, refuses, insists on not doing her part, then you have done your part and leave the rest with God. Now, there are times that the children, they want to come together and they're in conspiracy against the man because the father is the disciplinarian in the family. He's the one that says, don't sit there, don't stand there, do this and do that. And children don't like that. They want it the easy way, mommy. They want they will just lean upon like this. The one that say it's okay, it's okay. I will get it for you. The one that will not spank you, but father will grab his cane and say, uh, uh, wickedness abounds in the heart of a child, and it is the rod of correction that will drive it out. And then he says, wham, wham, and then the child cries. And where does, where does the child run to? To the mother. Praise the Lord. And the mother said, come my baby, come my baby. Who is the child going to love the most? But who is actually preparing a better future for the child? I pray the Lord will help us. So, Father, if they don't love you, it's not that they don't really love you, it's because they don't understand. You have a tough, tough position. Your, your, tough is, your job is very, very tough. And God will give you the grace, and that's where the courage comes in. If the courage is not there, you will say, well, nobody loves me. Nobody cares about me. And then you back out. Don't you see? And we are Christians. God will help us. When it is Mother's Day, don't you see all the news? The farm fear, over the radio, the internet, the children and everything. How many of you even remember today's Father's Day? Praise the Lord. When it comes to the Father, that one that spanked me the other time. Amen. Will help us. I said the Lord will help us. And we bless our homes and families in Jesus' name. Fatherhood is a calling and it's a ministry. It takes conviction to know this is my calling. It takes courage. It takes commitment. It takes compassion and it takes care to be a father indeed. The father is the brain of the family without which the whole body is dead. Sometimes ago I was in a hospital to see somebody that was involved in an accident and they said the person was brain dead. The heart was still there, but brain dead. Pay attention here. That person, it was a matter of time, was buried. When the brain is dead, there is nothing the rest of the body can do because that is the computer of the body. That is where all the communication, no matter what is happening in your feet, your finger, your toe, your thigh, your stall, your stomach, your back, everywhere, they are all connected to the brain. And if there is a disconnection from the brain, your head, then there is disaster. I pray the Lord will deliver us in Jesus' name. To be a father goes beyond just fathering a child. It is a ministry that cuts, cuts across generations. The act and life of a man will most likely determine what the future of his generation will be. This is what I'm talking about. We're talking about generational this, generational that. 
but the most time, things happening in the family happens through the fatherhood. The fatherhood. And that is why when God is visiting a home, visiting a family, either to bless or to judge, he goes straight to the man. How have you done the job I gave unto you to do? That is why you don't want to say as a father, hey, because my wife will not let me, and then you fold your arm. No, don't fold your arm. Stretch out your hand and deliver your family, and the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Don't be a coward. Don't be a timid person. Don't be an absent father. Don't be an absent husband. Be there. As a matter of fact, I will get there momentarily. The A in the word father is availability. You must be available. Spiritually available. Financially available. Morally available. Uh, psych uh, psychologically avail available. Academically available. In every area, you are there for your family. It's not about whether you are rich or poor. No, it's about your understanding and the state of the heart. And the Lord God will help you, help me, and help all of us as fathers together in Jesus' name. Amen. Fatherhood cannot be taken lightly. And must not be taken lightly. Again, it is a ministry. A ministry that is often attacked by the devil, often abused by women, and often unappreciated by children. And yet, it's a ministry that must be done. It's a ministry without which there is no future for our world and generation. Fatherhood is something that the enemy does not want to exist. Any attack on any member of the family is indirectly an attack against the father. The enemy from the beginning, I said that because the devil plotted, understand, the first creation of creature, man, woman, is the man, and then the woman. The attack of the enemy against it was actually against the man. At another time, we deal with that. We got into Egypt. And then, remember the story of Joseph getting into Egypt and Jacob going into Egypt and the, 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 the whole family ending up in Egypt and then became a mighty, mighty family. Now arose a pharaoh, a king in Egypt that will not recognize or appreciate the work, the labor, and the service, and the sacrifice of Joseph. The only thing he saw was the progress of the Hebrews. The increase of the Hebrews. The success of the Hebrews. And the fear of what the Hebrews might do. Paraventure war break out. He was negative in his thinking. He forgot that these Hebrews have been there for hundreds of years. Actually, they were in Egypt by then for 400 years. The time of their living and everything all together was about 430 years. If for 10 years, for 20 years, for 50 years, for 100 years, for 200 years, none of all those happened, King Pharaoh, you must be possessed with an evil spirit. And he was ready to be destroyed himself. Pay attention here. Whoever is unhappy with your, with your progress, whoever is unhappy with your peace and your joy, whoever is unhappy with your success, the Lord will deal with them in Jesus' name. I need a better one. Amen. And so, he decided to eliminate the Israelites, the Hebrews in Egypt. And by what means was that going to be done? The girls were there. The women were there. That Pharaoh was wise, demonically, satanically wise. His goal was to target the male children. The male children. And he knew 
that by eliminating the male children, the old generation of the Israelites in no time will be wiped out. But God was on their side, like God is on your side. Nobody will kill you before your time. I said nobody will kill you before your time in Jesus' name. Jesus was born as a baby. A star showed in heaven. The glory of the whole universe has been unveiled. And the shepherds, they saw the star. And they began to trust it. Eventually, King Herod got to know about it. Always king. Always king. Every evil king rising up against you, heaven will rise up against them. Whether as a father, as a mother, as a child, in the family, the family of God, every evil, satanic, demonic king rising up against you will be crushed down in Jesus' name. And King Herod determined to eliminate the child. Meanwhile, God protected the child. Like God is protecting you. Nothing evil will befall you. What did the king do? Again, kill all the male children up to the age of three. Eliminate them. The attack again is on the male children. Now, there was a time that the Gibeonites in Israel, understand? The Gibeonites were not originally parts of Israel, but when Israel was conquering and taking over their possession, the Gibeonites, they skimmed out a strategy, and then they lied to Joshua. Eventually, uh, there was an agreement, an alliance, and all that. But King Saul came and attacked the Gibeonites. Years later, famine came, plague came, if, uh, uh, attack came, judgment came upon Israel, and David now was the king. And uh, David inquired from the Lord. Now, this is a father now. The father of the nation. And to be a father, sometimes, it's not by age. It's by calling. Understand? It's a calling. And it's a ministry. And understand? David was not the oldest in his family. Talk less of in the whole nation. The father of the nation now knew that he needed to seek the face of the heavenly father to know what is happening and how to deal with the situation. To cut a long story short, the answer came. It was because of the sin of Saul against the Gibeonites. How I pray that you will not be made to pay for the sin of others in Jesus' name. Some of us are paying for the sin and the transgression of our father. The causes they brought upon themselves and upon the family. Some of us are paying, paying for the covenants they made that were ungodly. But pay attention. As a child of God, the Bible says, this is Jesus speaking. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Over all the powers of the enemy. Mark that word. Over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemy, uh, by enemies hurt you in Jesus' name. And so, David contacted the Gibeonites. What do we do? We have sinned, even though not me personally, but my predecessor sinned and we are all suffering it. And the plague is ravaging the land. And the Gibeonites, pay attention here, they said to appease us, give unto us seven children of Saul. Not just children. They were very, very clear. What kind of child? The sons. The male children. Again, the focus on the male. The focus on the male. And they were given, they were killed, and the plague stopped. Not the women. Not just any child, but the male, the male children. 
come back to the nation of America. When you look at the nation and you look at our jail system, the majority of the people in the jail are who? The male. And when you look again at the statistics of the Caucasians, the African American people, the Hispanic people, the Asians, the European, who are the majority of the male in jail. The African American, a systemic plot and plan to eliminate them. And the nation is waking up now. If you follow the news, the, the, the who is who in the nation, they are crying out that something needs to be done. That this systemic racism has been on for too long. That we need to liberate the people. And how I declare, liberation is coming your way. Amen. I said liberation is coming your way. I said all this to tell you that once you are a man, there is an attack coming your way. There is an opposition coming your way. The devil is unhappy with you. But be happy with yourself. I said be happy with yourself. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 1, verses 6 to 9. Be strong and of a good courage. This is now another father figure of the land, Joshua. Moses, the servant of the Lord, was gone. Joshua is now to take the leadership of the people. And God is speaking to Joshua and saying, Be strong and be of good courage. For unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very what? Can you see? Only be strong and the first time courageous, this time around, very courageous. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from me to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Sir, you must abide by the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord, if you must prosper. This book of the Lord shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Stop right there. I'll come back to this to continue. Don't close your Bible yet. Success, good success, don't come by compromise. You hear what I just said? It does not come by compromise. Do your part. As a child of God, as a man of God, as a woman of God, do your part. Play your role. It will not always be easy. The Bible says, Yea, they that must live godly in Christ must surely suffer persecution. So, if you really want to have the real success, godly success, lasting success, obey the word of the Lord. Submit to it and don't chicken out. Verse 9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be courageous very courageous, good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is, what? I can't hear you. Is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Turn to someone and say, the Lord is with you. Tell somebody, the Lord is with you. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hear me again. Women, let me talk to you. Today is Father's Day. And if you look at many places, you'll see the attack from the pulpit. You'll see the attack from the pew. You'll see the attack from the society against the men. Even the men themselves are under attack against themselves. Things must change. 
we must be wise that our lives, our world, our homes, our families have been destroyed. Generally, when you look at the statistics of men that die versus women that die, you see, you will know that men are the majority. Bring 10, sorry, 100 people that have lost either their wives or their husbands together. Who will be in the majority? Men will be in the majority that have died, leaving their wives as widows. We need to wake up. The women did not get married to lose their husbands at the flower of their age. And I declare and decree our men will not die anymore. Neither will our women die before their time in Jesus' name. Most fathers are ignored. Let's encourage them. They are ignored. They are abandoned. They are unattended. They are disrespected. They are unappreciated. Most men have been abused. They have been betrayed. They have been bruised and battered. Something is wrong. They are groaning. They are in pain. The devil's primary goal is to destroy them. And now he's going to use the media family to accomplish that goal. But you will not be a tool in the hand of the devil in Jesus' name. The goal of the devil for that is to destroy the works, the plan, and the purpose of God for humanity. Because the fathers are the real representative of God in this world. And the women, remember, were taken from out of the man. Out of the man. So the main target is the man because the devil was against God. And so the similitude of God, the representative of God, the ambassador of God is the man, and the devil is after them, and will do anything and everything to destroy them. May you not be a helper of the devil in Jesus' name. The men must be referenced, honor them, must be appreciated, must be obeyed, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And you man understand, if you don't follow God, how will your wife follow you? How will your children follow you? If you are a leader and you don't do things right yourself, how will your followers do things right? So as a man, stand on your guard. Stand and do what God has called you to do. Men should be complimented. Complimented. They should be supported. The primary purpose for which God created you as a woman, pay attention here, is to support your husband. If you are not supporting your husband, you are working against the plan and the purpose of God. If you are not supporting your husband, you make yourself an enemy of God. If you are not supporting your husband, you are working for his destruction. You are his enemy. Am I communicating? We need to call the spade a spade. A lot of things are going on out there. They must be supported. The Bible says, I will create for him and help me. Help me. Help her to meet the needs of his life. You no, know, there is a sister here. She hears me as I speak. The husband is not even a member of this church. And there were things to be done in the church. And she knew that because of her love for God, commitment to God, devotion and dedication to God, she wasn't going to be available 
in the house to take care of this, to take care of that. And so she went to the husband, honoring the man, reverencing the man. Didn't say, well, it's the work of God, it's the work of God. God puts everything in order and took permission from the man. And then, eventually went to the man and thanked the man so much for allowing her to have time to serve the Lord the way she wanted to. And appreciated the man, and then, according to her, took a good sum of money and said, my dear, thank you. I appreciate you. Give the money to the man. Will the man love the woman? Will she allow her to go the next time? Aha. Somebody praise the Lord. Wise women. No wonder the Bible says that a wise woman builded her own house. But the foolish plucks it down with her own hand. Let's learn from one another. Don't learn from women that are abusive. Women that are sarcastic. Women that are incorrigible. Women that are under the influence of the devil. You know, I told you before that every human being is under the control of one out of two spirits. You remember? What are the two spirits? The Holy Spirit and the evil spirit. Um, please, for goodness sake, as a woman, you can get the best of your husband. Make him happy, and you'll be happy. Respect him. The number one thing a man needs from a woman is respect. Amen? Respect that man, and you can enslave that man. I'm not saying you enslave your husband. Praise the Lord. So, you reverence them, and the same thing with children. With children, you appreciate them. You obey them. You encourage them. You compliment them. You support them. You pray for them. Pray for them. The men need prayer. If they go wrong, the whole family is gone wrong. Many a times, some women think, well, we can do it ourselves. Now we see the outcome of single motherhood in America. Because the men are absent. Pray for them. Don't capitalize on their mistakes. They will make their mistakes. We are all human. We are all work in progress. Pray for them. Pacify them. What did I just say? When your baby is crying, what do you do? You give them pacifier. Whatever that pacifier may be. I won't go too deep into that. Don't go to dollar store and buy pacifier. I need an amen. Brothers tell the sisters pacify them. Are they, are they in the house? I said tell the sisters pacify them. Children, tell your other children pacify them. Okay, it's like I'm preaching to myself today. I'm stepping on toes, right? Okay, men, say pacify them. Thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. And reward them. They are laboring. Reward them for their labor. And you children, let me talk to you. I understand many a time. The first person to you remember to appreciate is your mother. There is nothing wrong with that. And I will say that you have not even done enough for your mother. But you don't ignore your father. Many a times you think they don't need it. Who told you that? Who told you that? Reward your father. He labored on you. He went through a lot of pain because of you. He went through trouble because of you. Don't you know the song we sing in our hymn book? I believe it's in 78, where it says, Faith of our fathers, living still. He said, in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword, oh, how our hearts beat high with joy. 
whenever we hear that glorious word, faith of our fathers, holy faith, will be true today till death. Faith of our fathers, we will strive to win all nations of today. And through the truth that comes from God, mankind shall then be truly free. It's about freedom and liberty. He labored on you. He suffered for you. Faith of our fathers, holy faith. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friends and foe in all our strife and preach thee too as love knows how by kindly words and virtuous life. Faith of our fathers, holy faith will be true to thee till death. Appreciate your father. Reward your father. Reward your father. Reward your father. And those of you that are parents, father, mother, let me quickly tell you this. If you have a living parent, please do not wait for them to cry to you for anything. Make it a point of duty to take care of them. Look up here. If by the grace of God you are working and you are making any income, it will not be too much for you to carve out a certain amount of money for your parents. Father, mother, take care of them together. Don't take care of one and isolate or ignore the other one. Pay attention here. Even if your father is a millionaire, he may not need your money, but the spirit of you doing something goes a very long way. And it's not so much of how expensive that thing may be. Appreciate your father. Gladden his heart. Don't insult your father. He may not even respond. Because there is a law, the law of karma. And what does it say? Whatever you sow, you will reap. So the father doesn't even have to say anything. But if you grieve him so much, not just that the law of karma is there, the father may simply say, what you did to me, your children will do to you. That's a cause already. And then the cause will continue to be from generation to generation. When you get to the age of your father, your peace is gone, your joy is gone, your happiness is gone, your marriage is gone, your life, everything is gone. Children, don't walk against your parents in any way or form. Don't walk against them. Don't support one against the other. If you do, your children will do the same thing for you. If you have done that, repent right now and God will forgive you and it will be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. There are certain things we don't want to, we don't like to talk about and and because we fail to address them, we have problems everywhere. And we say we are Christian. We are still having problems. A lot of Christians are living on that cause. And unfortunately, some of the parents are dead that you could have gone to and say, I, I, I repent of my sin. I am doing my restitution. Now they are dead. You need more prayer to cancel those costs upon your life and your children. And it doesn't matter whether to your mother or to your father. The, father, the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It will be well. In Jesus' name. As a father, who are you? Part of your role is to be a father to your children to be the husband to your wife, and as a Christian, to be a minister, both to God and to the world of your time. And as a father, you are a pattern, example. You are a pace setter. You are a protector. You are a provider. You are supposed to be a priest, a preacher, a planner, a peacemaker and a partner. A partner. In all the struggles of life, you're a partner to your wife, you're a partner to your children. 
You are a peacemaker. I told you earlier on, there will always be issues in the family. There is an old saying that the person you sleep together with on the bed is the one you bump into when you are sleeping. You know, yesterday, uh, we are coming from Kingston, North Carolina, and then one of the young men in the car, uh, we, we, we were all tired. All tired. And then this young man was sleeping. And the, the pastor that was sitting next to him, uh, he realized he was trying to bump into the pastor, so he tried to control himself. But you can only control yourself when you are fully awake. Amen? And before he knew it, he actually, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen? You know when children, they, they sleep on their mother, right? They lean on their mother. He actually literally just leaned on the pastor. And the pastor became a pillow. And the pastor, very nice one, didn't complain. And for as long as this young man was sleeping, he had a pillow supporting himself. Praise the Lord. Because the pastor was the closest to him, that's the person he bumped into. Amen? That's the person who was... So because we are close together, we offenses we come. Please, let's learn to forgive one another. Amen? Uh, don't say, well, you are the only one offending me. I'm not saying you should be the offender all the time. Don't be the teeth always biting the tongue. If that is your situation, pray that, Lord, if there is anything making me to be the one uh, hurting my family, deliver me. And I will deliver you in Jesus' name. But be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. As a man. Be a planner. Plan for your family. Think ahead. Plan ahead. Be a preacher. That's why you must be born again. Be a prophet. Who is a prophet? A prophet foresees the future. Uh, the, the, the future. A prophet is proactive, not reactive. You don't wait until things fall apart before you now start fixing it. Think ahead of time. Yeah, they may not like you because you are the one that is always saying, this must be done, that must be done, we are going here, we are going there, we are doing it this way, we are doing that way. Ah, why don't you even give us rest? Because there is time for everything in life. Be proactive, not reactive. Be a provider. Give us this day. What? Our daily bread. If you are a man and there is no food on the table, you say, I've been looking for a job for the past six months, for the past one year. I couldn't get one. And I say, you are a liar. If you cannot get the exact job you are looking for, pay attention here. When I was sent from New York to Atlanta, Georgia in 1996 to go pastor the church over there, I got there, things were tall. Life was horrible. To survive was very difficult. You know what I did? Even though I was told you have to be on full time, but I know this full time. This deeper life now is not what deeper life then was. Are you with me? Those of you that came later, you don't know what we have been through. I had to go and do construction work. I never knew how to handle hammer in my life. I never knew how to handle shovel except uh, 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 cutlass when they punish us in the high school those days. Or we do manual labor, not only punishment, manual labor. That was about the only manual thing I could do. But now I had to get into construction work. Today, so we were in Kingston. The other church over there, they said they are building, they brought the plan to me. Uh, this is what we are going to do. I look at the plan. And I say, how about this, how about this, how about that? Those who are not in the, in the plan, they didn't understand what I was talking about. And then I took them, I said, look at, then the person said, oh, now I understand. I never thought of that experience. Are you with me? I didn't say, well, if because the church cannot pay, then uh, everybody hunger strike. Eat once in a week, fast six days in the week. Is that the way it goes? No. I won't even push my wife out. I am the head of the family. 
I am the one that answered the call of God. I am the provider for this family. I am the one that must see to the welfare of the family. I went out there. It was shameful. I, if, I won't tell you the whole story right now. But to support the family, I had to do it. When I was sent to Washington, D.C., 2002, of course, finally settled down 2003. For about four or five years, pay attention here, this church could not pay me. This is not the deeper life we had then. I was sent here because the church was in disarray. A lot of things were upside down. Many had already had left. Pay attention here. I had to get myself into real estate to support myself. Are you paying attention to this? I'm saying all this to say that whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, somebody help me. Do it. Don't complain. Don't wait until you are able to get that certificate to work. And pay attention. If I really had to do driving job to make ends meet for my family, I would do it. When I see brothers complaining, no job, no job, I see laziness. I see procrastination. I see idleness. I see somebody that does not dream. I see someone that has no vision. I, ha I see someone that has no future. I see somebody taking advantage of the wife. I see somebody who cares less about the children. I see somebody who is not honoring the Lord. The Bible says that we should provide for our own house, otherwise we'll be worse than infidel. I need somebody to say amen to that. Amen. So you say, Father, a father must be faithful. Fear. Far-sighted. 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 Forgiving. Friendly. Fashionable, the letter F for, for father. He must be a fighter. You fight against the devil. You fight against anything that wants to creep into your family to destroy your family, to destroy your future, to destroy your ministry, to destroy your destiny, to destroy your unborn generation. You fight against that. You fight against idleness. You fight against corruption. You fight against anything that is not of God. Listen, a father must be funny. A father must be able to know how to frown. There is time for everything. Amen? But don't just be the frowning father all your life. Learn to be funny. Learn to throw in jokes. Learn to lessen the tension, doubt tension. father must be fabulous. If you like, you can call it fantabulous. Amen? A father must be accountable, letter A. Accountable. Let a man so account of us. A father must be available. Don't be an absent father. Please look up here. No matter how much you have to work to care for the family, you don't do it at the expense of the family. If all you do is just bring the money to the family, they never see you. When the wife needed your attention, your support, to help handle the child, you were never there. When the child was sick, you were never there. When correction is needed, and you know women are weaker vessels, but when the man comes, you don't even need to hold a cane. All you need is to say, James, 
And when James hear the father's voice, James. How do you know that kind of James with that monotonous, baritone voice? James. <laughs> James runs away. 